In this problem, we have a car that is under a constant acceleration as a result of a frictional force acting on the car's tires. Let's draw a quick diagram of the car and the forces acting on it to take a look at how these forces intermingle. So here's the car. As always, there is going to be the force acting downwards from the weight of the car. So mg, the mass, multiplied by the gravitational acceleration. Directly opposing this weight, coming up from the ground, is the normal force, so the Earth acting on the car. And then there's going to be the frictional force, which, based on the information given in the problem, should be the only force affecting the car's acceleration horizontally. Now, let's apply Newton's second law in the horizontal direction. Recall that Newton's second law states that the net force acting on an object is equal to the object's mass times its net cell acceleration. And this can be broken up by axes. So if the only force acting horizontally on the car is the frictional force, then in the horizontal direction, this frictional force is equal to the car's mass times its horizontal acceleration. And we can use what we know about the frictional force to expand out the left side of this equation. Because recall that frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction, in this case the coefficient of static friction, multiplied by the normal force. And as we can see from our diagram, the only force opposing the normal force is the weight, and since the car is not under any vertical acceleration, then that means that the normal force and the weight must have equal magnitudes. So the normal force can be substituted for the force due to weight, which is just mg. So the coefficient of static friction times mg is equal to ma for this particular car. Then notice that the masses will cancel out. And then solving for the coefficient of friction by dividing both sides of the equation by g, we can see that the coefficient of static friction is equal to the acceleration divided by the gravitational acceleration. So that's the net acceleration of the car in the horizontal direction divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Now, acceleration due to gravity has a pretty standard value, 9.8 meters per second squared, but we also need to figure out the car's net acceleration in the horizontal direction. We're told that the car covers one kilometer in 12 seconds, so we can use the, this information along with our kinematics equations to find out what the car's acceleration actually is. Now, because the inf information we're looking for is acceleration, and the information we've been given is distance and time, we can use the displacement kinematics equation to find this acceleration. The displacement equation saying that the displacement is equal to initial speed multiplied by time plus one-half of the acceleration multiplied by the time squared. The problem tells us the car starts from rest, so its initial speed is zero and this term vanishes. And then we can solve for acceleration by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2 and dividing both sides of the equation by t squared. So we find that acceleration is equal to 2 times the displacement divided by the square of the time. Now looking at the formula we found earlier for the coefficient of static friction, that coefficient is just equal to the acceleration divided by g. So the coefficient of static friction is then equal to the formula we just found for acceleration, but with g in the denominator. So the coefficient of static friction is 2 times the displacement divided by g multiplied by the time squared. So all that's left for us to do in this problem is to plug in the values that were given in the problem to find the coefficient. So that's 2 times the displacement, which is given in the problem as 1 kilometer, or 1,000 meters, and then it's divided by g, so 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied by the square of time, which is 12 seconds. Square the time, put all this into a calculator, and then we should find a value of about 1.4. So 1.4 is the coefficient of static friction that is needed. And that is it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. Please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. And if you have a question or a request, leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out. That's all for now, and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.